I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about three important concepts in physiology diffusion, osmosis and tonicity. Firstly, diffusion. Diffusion describes the spread of particles from regions of higher concentration to regions of lower concentration. Let's have a look at what we mean by this. Imagine a compartment filled with a solution, a solution capable of dissolving substances. This is referred to as a solute. Examples could include a glass filled with water or plasma contained in blood vessels. Now we add some particles such as the sodium and chloride ions found in saline. Through a process of random motion of these particles and the currents in the liquid, the particles move and collide and spread to areas of the solute where there are no particles. Eventually the particles reach a steady state and are evenly distributed throughout the solution. This even distribution is maintained by the random movement of and collisions between the particles. It's as if nature tries to even everything out so there are not regions of higher and lower concentration. Now let's look at a different situation where there are two compartments separated by a semi-permeable membrane. A semi-permeable membrane allows water and small particles to cross but, like a sieve, it stops larger particles from getting through. We add some small particles to one compartment and they diffuse throughout that compartment. If they are small enough to cross the membrane then they will diffuse into the other compartment as well, eventually reaching a steady state with equal concentrations on either side. Let's look at a clinical example of this by creating a diagram that represents compartments in the body. The intravascular compartment is the area inside blood vessels with red blood cells bathed in plasma, here shown in blue. The intracellular compartment is the area inside the cells of the body, here shown in green. And the extracellular compartment is the area in between these two, that is, outside the blood vessels but not inside the cells. It's represented in this diagram in yellow. There are particles dissolved in the various compartments, shown as small black squares here. The cell walls and the walls of small blood vessels act as semi-permeable membranes. Remember that water and small particles can cross semi-permeable membranes. If we add a solution with dissolved ions, for example mild saline solution to the blood, this increases the concentration of the sodium and chloride ions present in the blood. Nature doesn't like this uneven concentration. Because they can cross the membrane, the ions diffuse from the area of higher concentration to lower concentration. This equalizes the concentrations on either side of the blood vessel walls. Now let's look at a different situation. This time we add some large particles to the solution. They diffuse and spread out, but they're too large to cross the membrane. Because the particles can't cross, they remain concentrated on the side that they were added to. The term that refers to the number of atoms, ions, molecules present per litre is osmolarity. The next concept is osmosis. And before I define osmosis, let me illustrate what it is. Let's look at a situation where there are two compartments divided by a semi-permeable membrane. And one compartment has a greater osmolarity, that's the one on the left in this diagram, than the other compartment on the right here. Remember nature aims to even out the concentrations. The large particles can't cross the membrane, but water can. Water moves across the membrane from the compartment with the lower concentration to the one with the higher concentration. This increases the concentration on the right and decreases the concentration on the left and evens out the differences between the two concentrations. 
So we can define osmosis as the movement of water molecules across a semipermeable membrane from a lower to a higher solute concentration. Nature tries to equalize the concentrations on either side of the membrane. The term osmotic pressure is the pressure caused by this tendency for water to cross the membrane. When there is little difference between the osmolarities on either side of a membrane, then the osmotic pressure is low. When the difference is high, the osmotic pressure is high. It should be noted that the osmotic pressure is only influenced by particles that cannot cross the membrane. Particles that can easily cross the membrane do not influence it as they will be present in equal concentrations on either side of the membrane. The last concept I want to present is tonicity. Tonicity is the measure of the osmotic pressure gradient across a cell membrane, for example a red blood cell. The inside of red blood cells contain particles, ions, proteins and other chemical molecules, which give it a particular osmolarity. In the lab, if we take red blood cells and bathe them in a solution that has the same osmolarity, then the movement of water into the cell is balanced by the movement of water out of the cell. This type of solution is referred to as isotonic, meaning the osmotic pressure is the same inside and outside the cell. However, if we bathe the red blood cells in a hypertonic solution, one where the osmolarity of the solution is higher than that inside red blood cells, Osmosis causes the water to move from the area of lower concentration to higher concentration, that is, from the inside of the cell to the outside. As a result, the cells become deflated and shriveled up. Conversely, if we place the red blood cells in a hypotonic solution, meaning the osmolarity outside the cell is lower than the inside, water moves from the lower to the higher concentration that is from the outside to the inside of the red blood cells. This causes them to swell and even rupture. Now let's look at our clinical example again. When these compartments are in a steady state, the osmolarity inside the cells is the same as that outside the cells and is the same as that inside the blood vessels. Water moves freely between all compartments and there is no net movement of water. Now if we add large molecule drug to the, to the bloodstream by injection, it's rapidly distributed throughout the intravascular space by diffusion and the circulation of the blood. Because the molecule is large, it cannot cross the blood vessel wall and remains inside, effectively increasing the osmolarity of the plasma. The process of osmosis causes water to move from the compartment with lower concentration to that with higher concentration, in this case from the extracellular compartment to the intravascular compartment. This results in an increase in blood volume. An example of, of this is when you give patients an intravenous therapy using a type of fluid known as a colloid. Typically this is done after blood loss to increase blood volume in order to improve blood pressure and tissue perfusion. Now, because water has moved from the extracellular compartment into the blood vessels, the osmolarity of the extracellular compartment has now increased and is higher than that of the intracellular compartment. So consequently, water now moves by osmosis from the intracellular compartment to the extracellular compartment to compensate for this.